this story was very inspirational to me because this mom gave everything she could and she had very little. I met Cindy French at the Race for the Cure. She was there volunteering, giving back, although her son, Derek, had a rare childhood cancer, neuroblastoma. Derek was just this boy that wanted his mommy to fix him, and the hardest part of the story was she couldn't. Here you have a single mom who had to give up her job, give up basically her life to try and care for her son, but was always worried constantly about where she was going to get her next dollar. Billions are given to cancer research, but very little to help families struggling economically and emotionally with childhood cancer. Probably the hardest for me was um, looking like I was doing just fine, but realistically wondering where, how I was going to pay the rent, where my next dollar was coming from, to put gas in my car, uh, put food on the table, you name it. I was like, okay, God, what am I going to do? How am I going to make this, make it through this month? How am I going to do that? For me, no one really understood what I was going through, but I had to act like I was fine. I had to walk around and, and have my composure and make sure that everything was coming together for everybody else in the family, including Derek, still dealing with disappointments. I still had to be a mom to four other children. It was just unbelievable to me that here's this mom who's struggling to keep her son alive and here she's got to rush out and do a car wash so that they can go by. That family was put on hold for a year and she had to concentrate everything on Derek because that's who needed all the attention. She had to go to doctor's appointments that were changed constantly. She'd have to wait for hours for appointments. He was upset. He was frustrated. He was scared to death of what was happening to him. He refused to even deal with anybody else. So it was very difficult because I had to be there. I had no choice. She would always be cheerful. She would always be outgoing on the outside whenever she went anywhere. And everything was about her son and how am I going to cheer up my son to uh, the picture where she is racing him down the hallways at full speed in the wheelchair. That's Cindy French. Cindy French is going to do everything to help her son. And she's going to break rules. She's going to let him drive her car. You know, she's going to sit him in, on her lap and she's going to allow him to drive because she knows he's not going to have that opportunity. And then she's struggling emotionally. She's on a roller coaster. She's up and down every single hour. There's one photograph where Cindy threw a car wash to try and make money for her son. Her son was sick in bed. And she brought the jug of money to try and cheer him up. And she's saying, maybe we can use this money to buy PlayStation 2. And he says, no, Mom, I think we need to pay the rent. There's a scene where Cindy and Derek and the grandpa are all sort of pointing at each other. And it had sort of boiled to a very heated argument about money and how they're going to pay the rent and how they're going to pay the funeral costs. And this little boy is days away from dying. And here he is caught in the middle of that. And to me, that was the culmination of the entire series, because no family should have to have a struggle like that in that kind of a situation. The morning that Cindy found out she had to call hospice, um, she was in her bedroom and she was pretty distraught. Derek had sensed this and knocked on the door, and she tried to, you know, clean herself up as she always does, but he could sense her emotion, and basically the picture is him really trying to comfort her at this point. It was a big turning point. There's a scene where she is pleading with him to go through radiation, and he's basically saying, no more. I don't want any more. If it's not going to fix me, I don't want to go through it. I'm done, Mom. I think most people, when they hear your child has cancer, um, look away. They just sort of freeze up and they don't really know or even understand how to deal with that. I think initially when people ask you how you're doing, they want to know a little bit of information. If you start going into depth, they are not asking for all that. They just kind of want pat answers. Just enough information to give information to someone else in case they ask you. People that are actually dealing with this right now, they do need your help. They need your compassion. They need your understanding. They need your time. If it's just to sit with your child for a couple of hours so mom can get a break. 
There are so many times that my faith has carried me throughout this whole journey. And thankfully, I made it through. But there are so many people that go through this that, you know, lose their homes, lose their cars, lose everything they have. And I was very fortunate that I was not one of those people. I started a nonprofit named Derek's Wish which financially supports families fighting cancer because I felt that other families like ours that were struggling, that they shouldn't have to go through that and wasn't there something that we could do. Because I believe it's enough to hear the words, your child has cancer. And that that statement alone impacts a family beyond what people could possibly ever understand. It's important that people not only give to research, but give back to families that will never benefit from that research. And I hope that we can make a difference to a lot of families across the United States. When Renee started following us around, uh, I don't think she thought she could probably do it. Derek was not the norm. He was very uh, agitated with most anybody. And Renee took the time to actually just hang around, not photograph Derek, just get to know him. And I think that that's why he opened up to her because he saw her as somebody that understood and wanted to get to know him. For me, just seeing the pictures, it's an incredible experience because it tells a story and it's just beautiful. And I can't imagine not having these pictures to document our life and our journey together. At one point, Derek and I were sitting on the couch together, and uh, he looked up at me and he said, you really get it. I was really surprised that he had that intuition and actually knew that I actually did get it. He felt like, even though he wasn't crazy about me there taking pictures, that in some way I was representing his emotions. When she wasn't there, he would ask where she was. And not because he wanted her to take pictures. It was because he looked to her as a friend. And I just felt like he loved her. Part of the emotional roller coaster is knowing when and when not to take photographs. And sometimes the emotion would be just at such a peak level that I would have to step back and not take any photographs because... It was, you didn't want to interrupt her pattern, but you also didn't want to add any more pain to the situation. You didn't want the click of the camera to distract them. So, you know, you really have to be in tune with how you're feeling and be able to just step out of the room, basically. And so I did. I missed a lot of photographs because there were just some situations that were too sensitive to take pictures. In front of our fireplace, Derek and I made a Pinky swore a promise that whoever went first, we would be each other's guardian angel. And then on the day that he passed away, he asked me why I hadn't let him go. Mom, why don't you just let me go? And I told him, I said, Derek, as long as when I let go of your hand, you take God's, I'm okay. And he said to me, Mom, he's already had my hand the whole time. Not knowing when Derek was going to take his last breath was probably the most difficult thing for me because initially when I had started this whole journey, I didn't know that it would come to this. I was hoping for a lot less painful death because it was just so hard to know that I did everything I could and he thanked me for giving him that space and that respect. And I, for one, am just honored to be his mom.